Oh, oh, who's Abel, by the way? Oh, oh hi, Abel. Okay, I've got 20 minutes, right? <clears throat> um, like all my talks, I upload them to talks.webconverger.com. So if you're feeling like really weird, you could go to an old talk of mine. Introduce uh, yourself, Henry. Oh, my name's uh, Kai Hendry. So I've been using Golang for a couple of years, but I guess it's only in the last year. Oh, sorry, that's my umbrella. It's only in the last year that my, uh, my, my current employers have had, had given me the opportunity or let me go run wild with Golang because uh, we usually have been using JavaScript at, at the workplace. And if you're using JavaScript, um, you might run into problems, you know, just like JavaScript fatigue and promise chains. I mean, I, I think I'm quite comfortable around promise chains, but like when, you were, when I was working with, with newbies, sort of like exp when you explain callbacks to newbies, they sometimes suffer. When you, <laughs> when you explain promises to people, oh God, it's, it can be difficult. So, um, so what do I do at work? At work, uh, at, my, uh, at my sort of nine to five job, Monday to Thursday, I work for a company called Spool. We do video stuff, and we're like everything's in AWS. So, you know, the minute uh, one of our content creators uploads a video, it's like on S3, and then we're processing it using AWS Batch, and then we're slicing and dicing it and putting it um, up on on CloudFront. And I think we're not. Terribly unusual. I, th I think most. I mean, how many people are using AWS at their workplace? Okay, some people. What else is there actually? Google. Azure. Please. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Well, so my talk. So my talk is about GoLang and and and, a and AWS, because like when you bring both of those things together, I think you can do some cool some cool ass things. Um, the Golang and the, sorry, the AWS SDK is actually one of the most popular packages on, on GoDoc.org. I don't know if it's actually accurate, but I was I was impressed to see this thing. I don't know what the hell this Firestore is. Sounds crap, but uh, <laughs> never mind that one. <laughs> but the AWS SDK is is one of the most po popular ones. <laughs> but if anyone who's actually used the AWS SDK. What? Two people? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Do you actually work? Because <laughs> you, you need to know this stuff, otherwise you'll nice, suck. Nice. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, okay, sorry. sorry other right. languages? <laughs> yeah, other, other languages exist, like Python. If you use the AWS CLI, it is actually quite good. But then you might want to sort of automate it and put it in a Lambda function, make sure it runs every day, or something like this. And you'll just hit problem after problem and use the, the CLI, uh, uh, I feel. I mean, who uses the CLI? And, okay. It only gets you so far. You've got to trust me with this. I'm sure you've seen it. And as you all know, Golang, like when you implement stuff in Golang, it's, and, and importantly, when you write some like underscore test.go with it, it becomes so much more confidently stable and a, a way of handling complexity. I think, I mean, a lot of smarter people have said this. The minute you start having your tests for, for, for managing your processes, the minute you can sort of like offload this complexity. You know, previously when I came back to some shell scripts, I kind of ha had to like remember how these things work all the time. I didn't really have confidence that this thing was working. But when I, when, when I, when I you know, CD into my, my Golang project and I just go, go test, and I'm testing something end to end, I have perfect confidence that it works. And most of the time that's true. Um, we were using, as I mentioned, uh, JavaScript, but yeah, it's, it's a bit painful. It's a bit painful. I, I, we, we still use serverless framework for a lot of stuff, but, um, but it's very hard to, to manage the asynchronicity of JavaScript. And and Golang makes it easier because it blocks by default. That's so nice. So I think the results have been quite amazing, actually, at my workplace. We've, you know, ha we, we've been able to like not run EC2 instances. We, we, we've been able to not run Docker instances. And we've been able to automate things in, in a very sort of confident way. 
and basically, yeah, save money and save time and all that sort of jazz. Oh, so at work in the last year and a half, I've, I've done the static, the website is statically built. Um, obviously, some JavaScript shit runs on top of that, but uh, that's not me. <laughs> I, do the, I do the static uh, thing. Golang is pretty awesome H HTML template thing. It's pretty fast, too. The playlist generation, so those M3 rate, those dash XMLs, that's using um, a, a, a Lambda function. It scales. I think we were previously running it on a Rails backend, and now it's like an Apex up function that costs us like 20 cents a month or something. It's just, well, it's hard. You know, you get a million requests or something free anyway. It's cheap. Uh, this new catch-up TV stuff, um, that's done with a whole bunch of Lambda functions. Uh, the stats pipeline, you know, Kinesis makes it really easy uh, to, to handle streams of data, and you can just write a, a Golang Lambda function which computes something. It's pretty, pretty so nice. How does Kinesis to non-AWS users? Kinesis is like, Kafka. Is like vomit. <laughs> no, a steady stream of vomit dribbling down your shirt. No, uh, it's, uh, is it Kafka? I don't really know. It's, it's a way of handling uh, streams, I think. And I've written lots of internal tools with, with Golang. It's not just, like w one thing I, 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 I did in Golang, which you couldn't po probably do in Shell very easily, or well, you probably could do with Image Magic. Like for example, I had to, had to figure out um, whether some of our test feeds were, were going blank. So I wrote like, just with, with some sample code from the image library, which is quite nice, to detect it when, when uh, uh, segments are, are blank. And I don't think you can do that. Well, you could probably do it with FMPEG and Image Magic, but I did it a lot faster. I, well, I did it a lot slower, but it's faster now. <laughs> um, yeah, so the way I deploy Lambda is, um, functions is with this thing called Apex by TJ Hollowaychuk. He used to be a big guy in JavaScript community, but then he saw the light and joined us Golang developers, <laughs> I think. Actually, is this a big mistake? Has Golang actually worked out for you guys? I don't know. Um, uh, so Apex is for handling the, um, the lambdas, and Apex up is for handling the lambda and API gateway. <clears throat> As a rule, I try and keep my functions outside lambda, so I you know go test everything, and you know just my, my lambda functions are just like the function call that that's all tested somewhere else. I don't put much complexity inside my lambda as if possible. Um, but and and then I use SNS for communication, I guess. And, Here's a, here's a typical sort of things I, I use. Like, cool thing about Apex is that it makes it easy to, to on your CLI to, to filter out all the errors. Um, it makes it easy to like debug invocations all from the CLI, which is pretty nice. I like. So the V1 um, SDK, if anyone used it, is um, I've got some links there. It's a bit weird when you start using it. There's all these like pointers, and I, when I first or so, or references, I, I know. What is the correct term? Pointers, references? I never know. I think I, think I call them pointers. There are all these pointers everywhere, and the code looks really ugly. Um, I, ca I should have put out a code snippet here, but uh, it feels a bit strange. Has is, is, is anyone used the AWS SDK? Uh, it feels a bit weird. And <clears throat> like I noticed also, it doesn't support AWS profiles, so every time I had to switch between accounts, I don't know about you guys, but I try to keep doing stuff in separate accounts. And it's really painful switching between things uh, with the V1. And it sucks. Or, I don't know, it's just a bit weird. Um, but now there's a V2. I was very excited when I learned about this at reInvent. But the bad news is that it is pretty unstable. Um, you've got to start using DEP and, uh, and stuff like that. Who uses DEP? I tried playing with it. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I like DEP. It's a bit slow, isn't it? Or uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, oh, and then sometimes I have problems with importing stuff from different, I get these vendor errors when I'm doing some cross account, uh, anyway. So the bad news is that it is a bit unstable, it's a preview, this is actually kind of like work in development. And we actually, and I know you don't want to hear this, but we, they want, they need people to use it so that they can shake out the bugs and, and get it right, I think. So I think, I mean, I, I'm one of those guys who like to use new stuff, but to be honest, it can be painful at times. 
And there's a link to GitHub search. I actually did a GitHub search and there was only like one other guy, Raven, in Singapore who was using the V2 uh, DynamoDB stuff. One other guy in the planet. Uh, in Singapore. Which I thought was quite cool, but at the same time, really, really sad. <laughs> um, and one of the things I don't like about the new VTuber that, that, that hopefully will bring it back is that there's this option called chain verbose errors. I don't know how you guys work, but when I work with Golang SDK, I don't declare the permissions. I, I, I run my program and then I see what permissions it needs. And when you run it with the verbose errors, it tells you what permissions it needs. So it's very easy to make a policy from at a later date. Or you could just put AWS, I don't know, full privileges and get your Lambda running that way. <coughs> that also works. <laughs> so, but the good news is that the new V2 has AWS profile thing, so you can switch between accounts, really nice. Um, the good news is that it is being designed, is being worked on, and, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm no es expert with SDKs and stuff like that, but I do enjoy um, learning about APIs because I think, I think everyone should know a little bit about APIs. It's just like a fundamental thing, isn't it? Um, like, for example, who, um, does anyone use um, AWS JavaScript SDK? Like, I thought it was very interesting that the AWS has this doc, uh, DynamoDB um, uh, interface, but they also invented this other thing called Doc Client, which made it a lot easier to work with JSON and JavaScript. So it's not like other languages have solved this problem. This is like, you know, this is an ongoing problem with all languages, having a good API to, to a third party like, a, like AWS. And the other good news is that the, the developers are, are, are quite nice. I've asked some stupid questions on, on GitHub issues and they've, they haven't shut me down like other people have. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, here's an example of like what... Um, what the SDK kind of looks like, you know, these, what do you call those, ref, those ampersand things? Yeah. Reference those, to. I'm not too sure what they mean. I add them to the things to make things work. <laughs> <laughs> Same goes to this thing, whatever that means. Address of reference to. But um, the, the reason why they the reason why they have these, um, these references, um, these, sorry, conversion stuff, is that, um, is that evidently um, the, the way Golang works, oh, Jesus, I'm not an expert, you guys can probably fill in the blanks here, is that if you just, I think you do, if you declare a struct or something, if you, if you declare like an int, the, the SDK doesn't know if you meant zero or if you meant it, it was unset. This is the big problem with Golang. So hopefully that was a good explanation. <laughs> um, so this is why they have, they have all these like weird conversion stuff. Um, but with V2, they make an exception to maps and slices because that maps to, um, to AWS stuff because empty slices and empty maps, what have you, they also don't exist on AWS. So they previously, what do you call this, converted everything in, the, in V1, V2, less things need uh, converting. So the code is slightly more readable. Um, um, oh, one way of not doing all these, um, these, what do you call these conversions, is to um, use setters, but it was decided in a, in, a, in a GitHub issue that this is not Id idiomatic. I don't know, does anyone have strong opinions about setters? Well, they've decided yes. to drop them. They're just very Java like, that's all. Okay, we're not, there's no setters. There's no setters anymore, guys. Sorry. Um, and another thing with V2 is that. They've designed the API so that there's, there's less methods to every call. And I, I guess, I don't know where this request stuff comes from. I guess HTTP request has something like this. But I don't know about you guys. I use HTTP.get and HTTP.post. But anyway, they, they've made changes in that, in that regard. I think the idea is that when they have smaller APIs on a, on a, on a call, that, that like, I don't know, your auto-completion isn't such a big What's the term? Fucking mess? You know, when it goes like that in your editor? It's, it's much easier to, to basically build something uh, with Visual Studio Code or Vimgo. Who uses Vimgo here? Power. Power to the people. 
Um, and then, yeah, they, they're basically adopting some idiomatic styles like Buff.io. But to be honest, I, I don't even use Buff.io. Uh, who uses Buff.io? I, I, I use read all and <laughs> be done with it. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, and the, a, a, uh, the good thing about um, the V2 is that the configuration is much easier. There was like a couple of weird ways we're doing it with sessions, I believe, in the V1. Now it's a lot more simple. And even, it even can handle like more be, better caching states. It can even handle MFA. Who uses MFA here? I don't know what that is. It means mo mother, father. <laughs> no, it means uh, multi-factor authentication. I use, oh, okay. I use, I use Authy because Google Authenticator burnt me. Um, but I hate Authy too. I hate it. Uh, <coughs> banks use it. Well, banks use it badly with uh, SMSs. V2 should be also be more performant. I'm not too sure what ref reflection is. I think it's when you look at a mirror and you get a reflection back at you. But evidently, with the V2, they're using marshes instead of reflection. I know reflection is like the last chapter in the GoPL book. Has anyone read that book? It's the very last chapter. I never read the last chapter. It's too difficult. But anyway, this 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 thing. The, the, there's always these, these links to the issue, and, and with this thing merged, it should be faster. I, I, I mean, it's claimed. I haven't actually noticed the difference. To be honest, Golang is pretty crazy fast yes. to begin with. I mean, <clears throat> oh, and the d discoverability, um, like with the V2 thing, I noticed that these, these, um, these very handy things. Who, who uses DynamoDB here? What the hell? What are you guys doing with your lives? You need a data store. You need to use something like DynamoDB. Um, AWS Fanboy. AWS Fanboy. You can also use JSON on S3. I use that a lot because it's so much cheaper and easier. Anyway, <coughs> DynamoDB is sometimes what you need to use. And uh, I actually discover these very handy things like Marshall Map and Expression Builder. Because if you work with, uh, with DynamoDB, you usually have to do these very strange like hash equals expressions to build up stuff and, and, and basically there's some there's easier ways and v2 exposes them nicely so yeah um cranky so this is i wanted to make this repeat how do you make it repeat so guys when you're using v1 think about adding a dash v2 and then you're using v2 isn't that extraordinary it's so easy to switch <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, that's basically, I think that's basically all I had to say. I, I had, I, just before coming here, I thought it'd be funny to show you a blank video. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I thought it'd be funny to, to take um, a V1 uh, thing, uh, GH Poles, which is by TJ Holowichuk, and, and see how long I could quickly um, change it to V2. Um, it took me about seven minutes, which was quite long, I thought. <laughs> but uh, I thought we could just run this on the background while I take questions. So you can, see, you can see the kind of changes that I had to make, like copy, paste, and change things from, um, from pointers to uh, whatever, normal stuff. Ref references? Oh, OK, yeah. Um, and, and also, you can be enamored by this thing called VimGo. Um, it's a lot faster than video, Visual Studio. Like Visual Studio is like molasses. This thing's pretty fast. I'm actually going a little bit slowly because my, my son was like hanging on my leg. <laughs> but this is the way I, I work. Control F, Vimgo. And yeah, any questions about V2? Hopefully something. Um, uh, for, for people who don't use AWS, we're lacking a bit of context. What yeah. the hell? Do you know what AWS is? It's a uh, toilet system, the best toilet system <laughs> in town. <laughs> no, uh, AWS is, is basically a hosting service, right? No, 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 I'm not asking what AWS oh. is. Like, or, so do you have ex an example of um, the kinds of um, what do you use it for? Yeah, what do you, do? you use it for everything. No, not That's AWS. A... I mean, I mean the, the SDK. Like oh, the SDK. Yeah. Well, um, well, this one, this little thing here you, is. Do you run it at the end? What? Do you run it at the end of this video? Uh, I do a go test, and everything passes. <laughs> Pretty close. 
<laughs> Same as being run. Ooh. Uh, yeah, this is the way I work. Um, I, I should have bound Go Test uh, to some sort of key, but I just I just do things save Go Test. <clears throat> what, what do you use it for? Like, uh, yeah, like AWS is you just use it for computing. I don't know, storing files, manipulating files, doing pipelines. You, you, I don't know. You when you when you, you when you have a GoLang program, you need to host it somewhere. And AWS is the place to host it. Obviously, you don't need you don't need you don't need to to use the SDK for for like some sort of like I don't know random number generator or something like that. But the minute you want to store files, this this is using DynamoD. The, the minute you want to use some sort of query engine, the minute you want to uh, manipulate thing, uh, I don't know, m manipulate AWS resources, you need the SDK. Trust me, you're going to have to touch this bad boy. So it's all in your best interests. To um, to have a look at the API uh, to, to to be familiar with it, and uh, yeah, I I think at my workplace, I dare say this using using AWS. I am a total fanboy, but it it has saved so much time and money, and I know things work so much more robustly and uh, and reliably now that. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm. I would go far to say that I'm. I'm going to resign from my job and go into consulting so that I can help other businesses use, uh, it, yeah. use, use this stuff. This stuff called Go. Have you heard of it? It's okay. It's not bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, Go tests and and AWS. <clears throat> I I don't know if does Google and Azure have an SDK of their own. It'd be it'd be interesting to compare actually. Um, I'm only I'm comparing with the JavaScript one and, and this one and I prefer I think I prefer the Go one. But walk, walk through a typical use case. A file pops up on S3. What the hell? A file pops up on S3. It'll upload it. Someone uploaded. Somebody it. uploaded a file on S3. Yeah, you can. It, it triggers an apex. You, you can you can you, yeah it can trigger like what do you call this an event. Yeah. And then you attach. Uh, uh, a so GoLang uh, your function. Golang function is attached to your apex. Yeah. Your Apex is just a way of, of uploading it. Yeah. So your your GoLang uh, Lambda function would would take the would take the event and do something like right. like, like send you an email that like something was uploaded. Like DB field, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That sounds boring. Okay. Emailing or, or or perhaps transforming the image or something like that. All right. Take, turning into a thumbnail. Yeah. Sorry, I should have come up with some more use case. I, I was. Actually, you know, I was too tired to come up with more examples. This is enough, guys. This is hard enough. Seven minutes of concentration. <laughs> I didn't use Facebook once. <laughs> as you can see. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, um, it's it's uh, yeah. I'll be, anyone, I'll be happy to learn about other SD, other APIs and SDKs. Whatever's best is my motto. Oh, yeah. Any questions? Um, uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, no, uh, so um, in your experience uh, using uh, any other SDK, first of all, I use Python one. So oh, God. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So, Fair uh, enough. Uh, what was it, uh, in your experience, what was the like, improvement in your, in your portfolio? Uh, well, I mean, I have limited experience with Python. I, I've never deployed a, a Python Lambda function. I, I have used AWS CLI. I don't know if that counts as Python. But uh, but w when I was using Python um, before, um, I wasn't testing. Maybe th is, what is the testing framework in Python? I don't even know. Unit tests. And then I guess I guess Python also isn't strong, strongly typed. Is it? Is that true? No, I don't know. It's not strongly typed. So so basically, the strongly typed GoLang and, and, and the testing. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't go crazy with the testing. I just do like something quite end to end. <clears throat> but from f from Python to GoLang, I think GoLang. Is um, faster. Never mind the faster. It's just way more robust and reliable. Like seriously, it is like it's. I know it's going to work. I don't know with Python two and three, with the bytecode and all that jazz. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, but yeah, it's it's just giving me. It it gives a yeah. It, I can safely offload complexity with the stack. I feel. Any other questions? So the SDK cover uh, all the Ooh. APIs? Yep. 100%. I haven't noticed anything missing. Um, 
Well, it, it's well, the, like it's interesting because like the Amazon JS SDK doc client is like a weird API of its own, and obviously those their APIs aren't mapped to. I mean, how do I explain this? I mean, these APIs are. They, some some of them do a lot for you. Some of them don't do so much. But uh, you can do everything with GoLang um, SDKs. It's, it's not like you're limited. But some 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 I would say are easier to work with. Maybe. Like, let's be honest. Working with JSON and, and GoLang is <laughs> it's a little painful. But uh, you get used to it after a while. Um, any other questions? Oh. Have you moved to the, the using the native? Uh, go on instead of the I haven't actually. I haven't. I'm using um, Apex's JavaScript shim. But uh, I, I've been following the bugs, and people say that they haven't even noticed any real change. I mean, I think it is folly. I hope you all agree with me to focus on speed, because speed is not the important thing here. It's having something robust and works and deals with complexity. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing. Okay.